<clears throat> okay, so this week I'm raw. They did a whole lot when it came to getting the TLC paper review up and ready, which is nice because it really, really needed it since it is in two weeks. We'll being with CM Punk discussing being attacked by the Shield as well as having another Wyatt family, it was nice to hear about the Daniel Bryan abduction because it really wasn't talked about. I thought it was really weird. <clears throat> so at TLC, he is in a handicap match. He is taking on the Shield. The Shield had a very solid match with Cody, Goldust, and the Big Show. Which, of course, they, they won through the weird, random, we're just going to keep on throwing out stuff. And the end was just fantastic. <clears throat> Goldust hit a superplex on... Dean Ambrose, while Seth Rollins was the legal man, Seth Rollins had a roll up from behind, one, two, three, beautiful match, great, chaotic, it really played to the shield strengths, awesome match. <clears throat> Daniel Bryan took on Rowan, good, nice back and forth, and Daniel Bryan sneaks out like a roll up victory. I do think it's great that the, the Wyatts can look so impressive in the ring, really dominant, and then just have like a minor slip and lose the match. But what really made this perfect was afterwards Bray Wyatt cut a ridiculous promo. Bray Wyatt is going to be this generation's Mick Foley. Just fantastic promo about it. Daniel Bryan at TLC is taking on the Wyatts in a handicap match. Alright. Not bad, not bad. Dolph Ziggler continues his rivalry with Damian Sandow. The winner gets to face Biggie and Langston. Of course, they've gone one for one in their bizarre specialty hardcore matches. This time, Damian Sandow gets the victory. He is headed to TLC to take on Biggie and Langston. Alright. The other half of the world's strongest tag team, Mark Henry, had a match where he took on Fandango. Pretty decent match to see Fandango and his style play up against Mark Henry, both Henry getting the victory. Uh, pretty good, pretty good. They continue the pseudo-tweener potential heel turn of Brodus Clay as Tons of Funk took on Xavier Truth, or R. Woods, whatever they want to call the team of Xavier Woods and R. Truth. <clears throat> and, you know, their match on, a, on SmackDown ended with Brodus Clay hitting a second rope splash in the pen of Xavier Woods. This time he missed it in probably one of the most awkward La Mahi Straw cradles I've seen in a long time. Xavier Woods is able to pin Brodus Clay. So, pretty decent match. I like the storyline they're going with there. I like how Brodus Clay, while still kind of dancing, is upset that someone else kind of showed him up last week. Different. That was pretty interesting. It's, it's, it's a unique, small story arc. The team of former Heyman guys, Ryback and Axel, or Ryaxel or Kirkback, whatever they want to call them, <clears throat> took on the quagmired team of Kofi Kingston and The Miz. I say quagmired because Miz left Kofi Kingston high and dry. They then had a couple of matches where Miz was playing the role of the heel. But Miz had a show coming out on ABC Family, Christmas Bounty. And then he yucked it up with Michael Strahan. And, but he was still kind of a heel. But then he tagged him with Kofi again. No idea if he's a heel or a face. Well, soon he's a heel because after Kofi got pinned, he smacked him in the face. But it's just no idea what to do with those two guys. It just seemed really awkward. <clears throat> the real Americans took on the primetime players, which kind of made sense due to what happened on SmackDown, where Pettis O'Neill beat the great Kali in a food contest, but then took the giant swing from Cesaro that threw up on everybody. So, of course, this time the Real Americans get the victory with a really great, you see, uh, Darren Young comes off the, the middle rope 
and eats a European uppercut. Great, sick, strong looking finish. One, two, three, real Americans at the victory. Worked, worked well. Then a six diva tag match where the Bellas teamed with Natalia to take on Summer Ray, Tamina, and AJ. AJ skipped around the ring till pretty much the end where she was beaten by Natalia. Which now means that TLC Natalia will take on AJ for the title. Okay. Not, not bad. The match had some slopper to it, but all in all, not a horrible match. But what really, really dragged this episode of Raw down was since they were going to the contract signing for the title unification match at TLC, they kept on going back and forth between, you know, the rivalry between John Cena and Randy Orton. Great rivalry, story rivalry, just don't kill a bunch of time dealing with it. Just, it felt like so much filler. And then by the time they actually get everyone into the ring, you know, Triple H, great job giving the lineage on both belts. Ironically, he left himself out, but Seth was there to make sure that, you know, he hit it home that, oh, yeah, I've held all these titles as well. Orton, great job of more or less saying, you picked me because I can beat him. And that is true. John has an issue when it comes to beating guys who have tattoos. Think about it. Think about the people who had pretty good rivalries with John Cena, where they beat him. I think of Edge. I think of CM Punk. I think of Batista. I think of Randy Orton. All these people have high amounts of tattoos. Randy Orton now has more tattoos. Now, let's be kind of honest. When it comes to this match, oh, and guess what? They're contract signing, and it wasn't beating each other up. I know, I know, it n never happens when they do a contract signing that the two people will actually beat the day on of each other, with John being the victorious one. I really do hope that they have Orton win this. Because I, I think if you have Orton to win this, it really does cement his legacy. Because he's not going to be the new number one guy. He's the number two guy. John Cena's number one. That's just pretty much the way that it is. Because I think if you put the belts on Orton, all of a sudden now, the authority has that really powerful champion they've been going for. If the belts go to Cena, then technically Cena has defeated absolutely everyone in every style of match, and has done every single thing you can do in his career, then there's nothing left for him to do. If you give it to Orton, Orton then still kind of has to prove himself in the eyes of the authority, as well as being the, the main heel for the shows. You know, there's a lot more for Orton to try to do. With John Cena as the face, there is no one for him to, for him to, fight, for him to face. There's no one for him to have that battle with. If you pull it on Orton, Orton still has unfinished business with quite a few other wrestlers. John doesn't. I think there's there's more mileage with putting the belt on Orton, and then having Orton hopefully hold on to the titles till probably WrestleMania where he drops it. 